Hi, I'm Pastor Matt, the pastor at Christ the King Lutheran Church here in Westchester, Ohio. I'm so glad you chose to join us to worship with today. Please be sure to visit our website at www.ctkluth.org for more information about our mission and ministry to Westchester and the surrounding areas and to find ways that you can support us. Now I invite you to focus your hearts and your minds as we experience the prelude. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of heaven and earth, you come in close and make us yours. Equip us by your Spirit to confess our sin, embrace your forgiveness, and seek the way you set before us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. With honesty of heart, let us now confess our sin. Merciful God, forgive us. Our will is handcuffed to sin, and we cannot break free. We have spoken when we should have kept quiet. We were silent when we should have said something. We acted when we knew better. We were still when we know we should have moved. For the wrong we have done, for the good we have failed to do, have mercy on us through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. People of God, look to the Son. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, given to us to heal and set us free because God loves us so much, loves you so much. 
that he sent Jesus to die on the cross and rise again to take away our sin. Take hold of the promise of eternal life and assurance of the forgiveness of your sins. Amen. set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Ephesians. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. 
For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's time for our gospel interruption. Now, I don't know about you, but every week there is something that ends up lying on my driveway that I never ask for, but it shows up. Usually it's in a plastic bag, and they manage to throw it usually around the time when it's going to rain. And so most often I am just directly picking this thing up and throwing it right in my recycling bin. But this week happened to be a dry week, and it worked perfectly for our gospel interruption today. It is a packet of newsprint advertisements that advertise everything from fishing gear to food. There are also lots of coupons in here. So if you are a coupon clipper, this is one of the things that you love. At the bottom of the coupons, it will say, redeemable, and it will tell you how much you can redeem this coupon for. Usually it will be a buy one, get one free. A couple of years ago, there was a reality TV show called Super Couponers, where people would figure out how to double and triple their coupons and take all of their hard-won gains back to their house where it seemed like they were hoarding five-gallon jugs of detergent and fabric softener and other things that they would only need in the midst of an apocalypse. This has other uses than just for being redeemed as a coupon. You can also line the bottom of your birdcage with this, or you can put it down if you are painting. It is multi-purpose. In today's gospel lesson, we hear about Jesus proclaiming that he will be lifted up just as Moses was lifted up, lifted up the snake in the desert and that people will be saved. They will be redeemed. Now, at first glance, it doesn't seem that this instrument of death and torture, the cross, is the place where God's love will be experienced, where we will be bought back. We will be claimed by God. Just as at first glance, this just seems to be a pile of useless papers and to realize that this helps actually to provide jobs for the people who print it and also for the people who make the products that are advertised in here. There is value in this. And God sees value in us and wants to redeem us from the sin that separates us from God. And in doing so, God does it in an unusual and unexpected way. He lifts Jesus up on the cross A death that was considered cursed at the time to give us the blessing of new life. So I invite you to pray with me as we contemplate how God continues to redeem us every day. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you that you continue to come to us in new and surprising ways. That the death of your son on the cross was not the final word, but it was a show of your love. And that his resurrection reminds us that we have been called and claimed as your children. Help us to daily remember this. All this we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. The Holy Gospel, according to John, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpents in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. 
Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come to the light, so that their deeds might not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who was lifted up in order that all might be redeemed. Amen. Our Gospel lesson finds us at a curious place. It's right in the middle of a conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus the Pharisee who has come in the dark of night to see if Jesus truly is the Messiah. And in this conversation, Jesus lays out the tenet that is fundamental to Christianity. As a matter of fact, it's a verse that we all know and probably could recite by heart. It is John 3.16. It's the famous verse that you've seen the guy in the rainbow wig and the yellow sign in the end zone or in the camera area of every major sporting event, it seems like. We can recite it by heart. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son that whoever would believe will not perish but will have eternal life. And that's it. But there's more to this verse that surrounds it, that informs what is going on in this conversation and helps us to better understand the depth and breadth of God's love for us. In our Old Testament lesson, we heard from the book of Numbers, which is full of really great stories if you can get past all of the begats and all of the laws. Stories of the Israelites rebelling against God. In the Old Testament, there is this cycle that we see of sin and then redemption. Sin and judgment and redemption take place again and again. The Israelites are grumbling. They're looking around and they're upset because they don't have food that they like. And so we are told that snakes show up out of nowhere and start biting them. And they get sick and they die. Moses is instructed by God to make a bronze snake and lift it up so that all would look, who would look on that snake would believe and they would be healed, and they were. It's such an important story in our culture, that, that image of the snake on the pole, you can see it in the caduceus, which is the symbol that doctors and paramedics wear, that let you know this is a place of healing. And so as Nicodemus and Jesus are having this conversation with each other, Jesus is telling Nicodemus that he is going to be lifted up just like those snakes in the desert. Just like the bronze snake that Moses lifted up, Jesus will be lifted up. Now in the culture of that time and even in our own current culture, Snakes have this mythos about them. In the story of Adam and Eve in the garden, it is the serpent, the snake, that helps to tempt human beings and leads to the fall of humankind out of God's grace in the Garden of Eden into sin. And so it is this image of this snake that is cursed, that is lifted up, that heals the Israelites, that Jesus is revealing to Nicodemus. that He will die on the cross. He will suffer. And death on the cross is not something that is happy. It's not something that is pretty. Interestingly enough, we wear crosses all the time. We, we have, I have a whole collection of pectoral crosses that I wear. I'm sure if you watch this broadcast, you'll see the different ones that I wear. People use them as accessories and as jewelry. 
but I don't think they understand really how painful and difficult it is to be crucified. That what they are wearing as jewelry, putting in their ears, wearing around their necks, slapping on their automobiles, is an instrument of death and torture. Analogous to putting a, an electric chair or a gas chamber on a necklace and wearing it around. The cross and dying on the cross, being hung on a tree, was viewed as being cursed. And through Jesus' death and resurrection, we watch God taking something that is cursed and making it blessed. God taking something that seems like it is worthless and something which should just be thrown away or avoided altogether and elevating it to a place where it redeems the world. This is what Jesus is talking about in this gospel passage. That it's not about our goodness. Notice how Jesus doesn't say that whoever is good enough, whoever is smart enough, whoever attends church or prays the best is the winner. He says that Jesus will be lifted up like the bronze snake in the wilderness and whoever believes will be saved will be redeemed. God sees and knows you. God knows all of your faults and all of your foibles, just as God knows all of my faults and all of my foibles. And God sees value in us, so much that God sent His only Son to suffer and die and rise again, to take away our fear of the curse of death and give us the blessing of life. Nicodemus comes to Jesus in the middle of the night. In the dark because he is afraid that if he goes to see Jesus. And others see him talking to Jesus in public. That he will be ridiculed. That he will be stripped of his privilege and his power and his position. And Jesus calls him out on this in the second half of our gospel passage. Jesus has come to be the light in the world. Jesus and our faith in Jesus is something to be celebrated in public. But not by beating people over the head with a scripture stick or showing how good we are to the world. We are simply called to follow the path of the one who allowed himself to die a cursed death, to bring us new life and blessing, to love those whom the world calls unlovable, to serve those who are in need, to welcome the widow, the stranger, and the orphan, because they have value in God's eyes just as we have value. And who knows? We might be the agency through which they are redeemed. We might be the ones to witness to the light and life that comes through Jesus Christ. We simply have to open our eyes. To focus on the places where rather than it seems as if curses are present. To see that God is there and continues to bless people even in the midst of the most difficult circumstances. The pain, the fear, the anxiety that people fear God is present. The Christ who suffered on the cross knows their suffering, knows your suffering and my suffering, and suffers with us. But that suffering is not the end. We know as we journey towards Lent, as we, the end of Lent, as we examine ourselves and we know our sinfulness, we know that the death on the cross is not the end. We know that Easter is coming. Sometimes we have to go from Good Friday through an Easter Saturday of doubt and fear and worry before we can get to that place of celebrating Easter. 
of remembering that we have been redeemed and called and claimed as blessed and loved by God. And remembering that it is by grace that we have been saved. And so the gift that we are given is the gift of hope in our faith. And the knowledge that there is nothing that we can do to receive salvation because we have already received it. We just need to remind ourselves daily that we are called to go out into the world and continue Christ's work of redemption and of love so that others may come to know and to believe and to be saved. Amen. And now, may the peace which passes all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all who are in need. 
Lord God, you sent your Son that the world might be saved through him. Inspire the witness of the church throughout the world. Empower missionaries, Bible translators, and ministries of service in your name. Bless our partners in ministry. Our ELCA global partner churches and young adults in global mission. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. From east to west, your steadfast love is shown. Nourish seas and deserts, wilderness areas and cities. Give water to thirsty lands. Nurture spring growth that feeds hungry creatures. Bless farmers as they prepare for the growing season. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You sustained your people in the wilderness. Give courage to all who lead in times of crisis and scarce resources. Continue to be with all who struggle against the COVID-19 pandemic. Prosper the work of those who aid victims of famine and drought. Bring peace in places where scarce resources cause violence. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Your mercy endures forever. Deliver all who cry to you, especially those who are hungry or without homes. Give life in places where death seems triumphant. Give healing to those who are sick and comfort to those who mourn. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. By grace we have been saved. Fill us to overflowing with that grace. That we show mercy to others. Nourish any in our midst who are hungry. Especially children. And bless the ministries of feeding and shelter in our community. Give us patience and courage when the way seems long. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your Son was lifted up that whoever believes might have eternal life. We praise you for all who have died in Christ. Bring us with all the saints into the fullness of your promises. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Oh,
Thank you so much for joining us for worship today. Please be sure to check out our Facebook page to keep up to date on our most recent mission and ministry activities and like us so that we'll show up in your news feed. And now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you and grant you peace. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.